Warning. There are many unexplained forces in the universe. Some can be dangerous and harmful to your health. To avoid any potential harm to you or your family, do not try this at home. What a time castle. Yes, this is. The building was built in 1826. It was a rental property with a two-unit uh, apartment upstairs that was a boarding house, two floors, and down here it was a tavern or a grocery store up until 1868 when William S. Phelps bought this property, brought his young family out here and his wife, and he started William S. Phelps General Store. Okay. The store ran until 1940, when Julius, William's son, said, I'm not doing this anymore, closed his doors up, and walked out the door. He left eggs in that blue carton over there from 1940. We were the only building on the corner by the Erie Canal in 1826, but the clientele was too rough. So what he did, this is the original door here, from 1826, this is where all the canal people and the people bringing produce or grain, whatever they were bringing, would come in with their big boots here and their grubby little hands here. So there's 188 years of dirt and DNA on this door. <laughs> Very awesome. cool. And this is totally original, never been washed, painted. Or changed in any way. So this is the original door for this property uh, when, from 1826. Along the canal side. Yes, until 1867. Okay. Then when William bought it, okay. he changed the door to the front, and he kept this as a storage facility, and he closed this door off, but he still kept it. Which is now the reasoning behind the closing this door off was basically to keep off the bad crowd, I guess. Well, the, the canal clientele was not your ideal for a business that was growing. And these fellas were rough and tough, and it was a tough time. And families just couldn't come down here, so that's why William moved the front. And he put that there with the beautiful windows, and he did very well for himself. Now, the, the Phelps family, like you said, actually lived upstairs uh, while this place had operated. So uh, they were here 108 years as a family, three generations of Phelps. Yes. Can we, uh, can we go upstairs and meet them? Absolutely. He was a very progressive man, and he, uh, he, he belonged to the Episcopal Church. He was the president of the village at one time, William, this is. 
And they were just very active in the community. And he grew a fine business here. But his son Julius, who came here when he was 17 days old, I don't think this was his thing. Although he was the son, he was supposed to take over. His father retired about 1900. And Julius took it over, never changed, painted, repaired anything. That's why when we walk into that store downstairs, or when we walk up here, we're walking in about 1880. It was totally left the way it was. So William lived here up until the end of his life, correct? Uh, it, yes, and his, the end of his life was about 1912. Okay. And uh, his wife died shortly thereafter. The family is still here, we know that. We've spoken to Mamie. She tends to watch things and take care of the house. Mamie is Julius's wife. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And Catherine is William's wife. Now, Catherine and William are the grandparents. Julius, They're the originators of this. Of the, they the are the originators okay. of this this facility, and then uh, Julius, their son, married Mamie, and Julius also had a sister, and her name was Mary Louise. Right after Mamie and Julius got married, they had Sybil within okay. the same year. So Sybil was the only Phelps that was born and raised here in this house. She became a spiritualist. I think she'd rather talk to dead people. She lived in this house the rest of her life. That in common, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. She taught. She uh, lived here until 1976, when she died. All right. So now this room right here looks like a one of the, a bedroom. Yes, it is. It's an added-on bedroom. Okay. It's off the kitchen and off the washroom. Uh, it's part of the the addition that William put on the building. This became the sick room so that when people were ill, because it was close to the kitchen and close to the washroom, they would stay in this room and be cared for. This is where people would spend the, le the last of their days? Probably, or if they were ill for some period of time, uh, they would be down here and, and recover. Um, Did any, do you know of anybody that actually died in this room? I believe, yes, that Mamie, Julius, William and Catherine. Now, Sybil herself, from what you've explained to me a little bit, she seems like a very interesting person herself. Oh, extremely interesting. She was very, very unique. And it's kind of interesting because Sybil was called, everybody kind of called her, they thought she was a witch. She lived in this place. This place was dark. The curtains were ragged. No electricity. No electricity, no running water. And here's this little old woman who would walk around the village, typically in black. Now, she lived here until she was 80, correct? 81, yep. So there's an old 80-year-old woman dressed in black and this old-fashioned, yep. everybody in the town, they, we're going to start finding that she's a witch. Well, they, the kids, the kids. You know, there's always that one house yeah. that if you go into it, you'll never come out. Or that the witch will come out and get you. That was what they thought of Sybil. And uh, they would torment her. She'd call the police up, and they wouldn't be able to convince her to let them in. If something was wrong, show me what they did. And she, he just, they just had to talk to her for the longest time because she didn't really trust or feel comfortable with anyone. So she felt she was being picked on by the town. Totally, by the, yeah. And they did, and I've talked to people that picked on her and would, would knock on the windows and make faces. And, uh, I think she did scribing with mirrors. That's why mm -hmm. you'll see so many mirrors everywhere. And a lot of them are facing each other. And uh, Now this is a spiritualist practice where, oh, you're, yeah. where you're using this to communicate with the dead. Yeah, I think that's what she did. And she, um, yeah, she could see things. So many people had seances. They all were talking to dead people. They didn't want anybody to know. Well, it's like modern Our day with, with Ouija boards. When you open doors, sometimes they're hard to close. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, being in a, a place that is a sort of history, you know, and someone with the capability like Sybil to communicate with the spirit world. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, all these things could be factors into why people are experiencing some paranormal activity within this home. All right, so have any uh, paranormal experiences happened to you personally? Not wild about being touched. However, this is uh, what they do to me. Hello. If I stand here, 
this voice comes in and breathes right in my ear. Uh, they caught that on tape, and, and I don't care for that because it's really so loud, it, it almost hurts. Uh, we've had talking, uh, I've had things move. Um, gee, we've had a lot of things. So do you, do you believe 100% oh, that this absolutely. is actual ghost activity you, from the Phelps family? And how can you say <coughs> it isn't because so many people... My husband was standing here one night after a Christmas <coughs> party we had in the store. And I was inside the store and he was standing like right here facing me. And I saw him look down there and then he looked back at me and he was like white. He said, you're not going to believe this, but he just saw somebody walk in the brick wall. Your husband did? Uh, on this property, right down uh, two buildings were three homes. They were small homes, they were rental properties. And at 132 Market Street, which is where the historical museum is, on December 20th, five days before Christmas, 1964, which is interesting because that's 50 years ago, this year, a family, a young family named the Breedens, uh, the mom and the seven, six children were in there and there was a terrible fire. The fire started early morning on the 20th, and uh, four of the children were with their mother huddled, and then two of the, the two boys, uh, two of the other boys were together, Samuel and Eddie. Eddie was the oldest. And they were found under a mattress. So they- They all died, they were separate, that's why. That girl okay, so good. So you don't like, when there's a fire in the house, you don't go under a mattress. And why? There's foul play involved, I would assume? Well, you know, it, it's a mystery. However, we've asked our local police department, and, you know, they've had the case, and they talk about it, and they look at it, and the facts lead, lead to the father. However, is well, it? Well, he's the only one in the family that actually didn't He die wasn't in the here. Fire. Yeah, that's right. He was the only one that didn't die in the fire and he was supposed to be away. There's two boxes of files on this, I guess. The firemen absolutely will never talk about it. It's too distressing, the whole thing. Okay, so this property, this is a house yeah. where, on what? the property where the historical museum yes. sits today. All those properties were torn down. The one that burned totally down, which is 132, is buried in the basement of where the historical museum so was set on where top this, of. these seven people all burned to death. Yep. That's still there? Yes, it is. That's in the basement? It's in the basement, yes. Can you check that out? We absolutely can. Okay, let's go. Okay. All right. This is the Palmyra Historical Museum. This is a 23-room building. The part we're standing in is 1826, was a restaurant and a boarding house upstairs. And the front part was 1898 and built as a bar room and a hotel. Total 23 rooms. We have a basement and an attic. And in the basement is where the remnants of uh, are of the house that burned in 1964. So they this old bar, it. tavern, every, this whole building was actually moved from... This whole building was moved the the from across the parking lot, and uh, in 1976, they moved it to save it from being torn down, and set it here, and left the basement. They didn't put in a full basement, which now I know why, because this graveyard, the home where the seven people died, is still in the basement. Did they recover the, uh, all of the bodies or uh, all of the entire <laughs> bodies or do you think there's still parts of As the firemen the tell it and they don't like to talk about it at all. Uh, they're, they got enough to burn. Have you ever found anything down there? Well, I found a little bone. I want to say real quick too, I mean we are in a, a historical museum. You so are. You, are, you have experienced activity in this building I would assume. Yes, correct? a lot. A lot? Mm -hmm. You yourself? Yes, yes and uh, we, we've, I've been doing this for so long that 
you just have to work through it. But the children are playing, and they come up, and they'll touch your uh, pant leg, or they'll pull your little hair, or they will, you'll hear them walking up and down. Uh, they move things. Things just happen all the time like this. I mean, where we're standing right now, this is the actual remains of this house. Yes. This is ashes. This is, this is ashes. There's a whole level of ash down here, and it was all covered with dirt. So this is brick and from the home? This is actual wood, burnt wood. This yeah. is the fu this exactly. is the home that burned down. Here's a piece of a plate or something. And it burned so hot that it was like a crematorium. Oh it was so goodness. hot that um, one of the firemen told me that when they found the a policeman came down when they found the kids under the mattress, he had said to the firemen, "Oh, look at they got dolls down here." What had happened was. The fire was so hot, there was no fluid left, and it shriveled them up. Oh my goodness! Oh, like a little. Like and this is the collapsed foundation. This is this the. Is it. This, this is, is the, the sidewalk. Yep. Oh cow! And it's all down here, and. Um, so you have this historical museum with all this, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of artifacts from yeah. you know the 1800s until now, and it's all on top of a tomb. Because there's a lot of history here, and a lot of stories, and a lot of lives. So um, let's uh, let's get the team team together, and we'll get all set up, and we'll get right back with you. Okay? Awesome. Thank you yes. very much. Bobby. Thank you right. very much. It's a pleasure. So what's going on? So uh, I know you just took a walk through both buildings, okay, okay. Uh, here in Palmyra. Um, can you tell me what you've experienced as far as the, uh, you know, activity in, in the buildings? Um, yeah, I got a lot, actually. Uh, we can start with this building first. Um, I went through the house, and immediately there is a uh, room with medical supplies in it. One of the museum rooms, rooms upstairs? upstairs? Yes. Um, I just get this, you know, very hyper crazed doctor, like Dr. Evil almost, um, not sticking to what he's supposed to be doing, like crazy medical procedures. Um, for example, I got the strong sense that he was actually an abortion doctor. Got a lot of, um, you know, just things having to do with an abortion out there. Also weird things like, uh, for example, someone went in there for just a uh, simple sickness and it would go crazy off the wall to uh, shock therapy or something like that. Just very off the wall. Something totally unnecessary. So, unnecessary, completely. Like he was just basically trying to hurt people? Yeah, just experiments. Okay. Just using people to do weird... You thought he could get away with it. Exactly, too. exactly. So this is, this is, you think time. this is a doctor that's attached to an object in the room? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, I got a lot of uh, energy off the box that was in there and I think that was having to do with the electric uh, shock therapy. Okay. And then there are um, tools, I'm not sure, the like gynecology tools and things and I think that's what made me think and be, you know, connected to abortions. He was doing abortions. Okay. Um, basement, very strong. The basement here? Yeah, very strong. What's going on in the basement here, Ashley? Uh, I can pick up my mother and some very small children dying down there in the basement. Um, I just think of them just not breathing, smoke, smoke, not breathing, suffocation, suffocation. And when I went down there, all I wanted to do was dig. All I wanted to do was dig in there. Okay. Yeah, there was a, the, okay, the, the building itself, even though this part of the building, even the room we're sitting in right now is an 1800s room, this actual building was across the other side of the parking lot. Um, the structure that was originally here on this foundation was burned. They believe there was foul play involved, but there was the a family. The father was not in the house. Okay, was supposed to be on business, and in the house was the mother and her, their six kids that had all died. Uh, there was children that were found underneath their bed mattresses. So this is something that you know the you know the town doesn't really like to talk about, but I mean obviously there. You know, we were led to believe that these people were already dead and placed under the mattresses, and then the house was burned down. But 
there is the original foundation in this basement um, of that building. There's pieces of the house, there's pieces of the kitchen, and Bonnie herself believes there's pieces of human beings down there Bones. still. Yeah. And that really happened she found four it. She years found ago a piece. this year. Yeah, she, she said she yeah, found a bone. So you, yeah, that's very, very right on. Right on. You definitely hit a home run with the basement here, because okay, that that happened. Okay. So, um, did you had a chance to go walk over to the the Phelps store? I did. Um, I was drawn to the second floor apartment, and it was kind of funny because I felt a very dominant presence of a woman that lived there. But it was kind of funny because I felt like she was just like me, in the sense of mediumship, it's spiritual. Specific. Absolutely. That would be Sybil. Yeah, Sybil was uh, the granddaughter of uh, William Phelps, who actually started the store. Uh, the, the Phelps family lived there for about 108 years, the three generations. Uh, it was William, his son Julius, and his wife, and uh, their daughter, Sybil. Sybil uh, actually lived, was, lived in that building until she was eight years old. She was a spiritualist. That makes sense. When you go into her living room, you can just picture and feel that readings went on there. Yeah. Readings and rituals. Yeah. You just get a very strong feeling. Um, I'm really interested to know, you know, what uh, connection you can get with with Sybil. Okay. All right. Um, you know, she said she's a lot like you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we're gonna try to use that to our advantage here tonight. So I'm going to take you with Dan and I, and uh, we have another investigator that's going to meet us over at the house, and uh, he has been here several times, and he's going to share with us some of the experiences that he had. Um, so let's get the teams together. Um, I am going to have uh, Lewis and Lynn uh, investigate the entire museum, top to bottom, uh, and you, Dan, and I can can use the, uh, you know, the time that we have here for the Phelps store okay all right so let's go let's get uh, you ready let's go meet Dan and Phil over at uh, the Phelps store and uh, you and Lewis can uh, start putting together your investigation over here okay, okay. Yeah. We, we just entered the, the Phelps general store and we're met here with, with Philip Gibson, who is a paranormal investigator. Now, you've investigated this building on several occasions, correct? Right, yes. Okay, and what kind of activity have you experienced in here? There is a uh, boy that constantly um, runs. There's talking in that, and uh, there's quite a bit, though. Okay, so you've actually captured EVPs down here? Yes. In this room, what do they, what do they say? Uh, just small things. Um, Prices and that stuff, uh, and just small talk, basically. Okay, so you think this is like a residual type of EVP that you're catching? Is just basically somebody going through a transaction at the general general store, talking about numbers and dollar figures and possibly prices? Yeah. Very possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, the the man who actually worked here and, and the most was William, right? Uh, which was the I guess the patriarch of the the Phelps family. Um, W. M. Phelps is that's 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 what we're talking about. Is William? He was here every day, and he built his home upstairs. Correct. Yes. Where him and his family grew up, and he lived there, and he would just walk downstairs to work. So he's attached to there. Correct. Definitely. Okay. You believe he's here? Definitely. Okay, Ashley. Do you believe he's here? I do. Do you think he's here right now? Yes. Okay. Um, what I want to try to do is I want to see if he'll talk to us, uh, maybe about some prices, because I know that. From talking to Bonnie, she said all this stuff on the wall is original between besides like two or three things. Right. So let's see if we can start an EVP session and see if we can get some price checks on some of the stuff from Lloyd. So okay. have a good idea. Like you're all right, right, let's get started. Okay. All right. So what I want to do is I want to start an experiment here and try to see if we can communicate with William. Uh, we know that he's the one that actually ran the store for the longest amount of period of time uh, during when the canal was built. And this was a very, very busy place. We know from the door here, check out the door. This is the original front door. This is the wear and tear of, you know, 103 years of the Phelps General Store that was going through these people coming from the canal. You know, this is where they would kick their boot and this is where they would push the door open. What I want to do is I want to start trying an experiment here uh, where we're trying to talk to William. Now, we know that he worked here at the General Store. He was the man in charge of the sales, and you're saying you're capturing EVPs of him actually going through sales transactions 
uh, you know, with, with things that are going on here at the store. So, uh, William, if you are here, there are some things that I would like to purchase from you. Um, I just don't know if we have enough money, so I need to know how much things are going to cost. So, we're going to set up an, an EVP session real quick. Okay, that's that's pretty that's pretty bad paper right here. If I get an item here, I need you to open up the cash register, maybe. And tell me what what I can't purchase and what I can't purchase. Are you seeing me over here by the docks? Am I? Uh, is everything here for sale? I hear music. Okay, I thought it was going crazy. You heard that too? Yeah, I thought it was going crazy. Did you hear music? No. No. I heard music. Okay. Upstairs? No, you swear. I heard music coming from upstairs. Yeah. Was it piano? There's no doubt about it. Was yeah. it piano? It Thank you. Piano. Yes, it was piano. Was it just like a there one? There was music coming from upstairs. It was like a ding, 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 like three keys, like music, piano. Yeah, I thought it was going okay. nuts. I and, I, and I know that during the walkthrough, she said that. that Sybil plays the piano, and she said sometimes, uh, she said if it's one note, it's one of the cats, and if it's more than one note, it's Sybil. So it was like three. So do you think that's Sybil up there and putting us up? I think so. And then when I went to go look over there, it was a shadow figure that went right by the door. Was it her? Yeah, you it was, saw that? It was Sybil. Ooh, that holy shit, that scared me. Was it a man or? No, it was a woman no. and she, it was a woman. And it was almost like floated, not walked, floated so gracefully past that doorway. I've seen that like. It's just like it's awesome. It's like being toyed with. It's like right. being toyed with. I think though, if there was. Look at there. There's smell the burnt wood down there. It's strong. First EVP per session, then I'm in the basement. Yeah. And it's really sad because I mean, you can see, um, you know, there's char remains and burnt wood, uh, just rubble from where the, uh, the house burned down. Did you die down here? some sort of a sign that you are here. Thank you. I'm trying to think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking yeah. of a good question. I told well, her to go to ask a question and the ovula said think. think. Well, we do know that a couple of the names of the children are Sammy and Susan. Sammy, are you here with us? here. Tell us your name really clear. I feel like they're... Yeah, you hear that? Yeah. It's back there. How many of you are down here?
what's our business? We're here to communicate with you to try to get some answers. Maybe if there's something that you want to relay to your family or say something to those that us that are still living. Why don't you speak into our recorder and tell us what your favorite game is? Upstairs you said it was hide, hide and seek. Said hide. That's awesome. Are you gonna hide right now? I don't think Lou's gonna find you. He's not very good at hide and seek. Oh. <laughs> he oh agreed. Yeah. <laughs> huh. I'm much better, but I have my flashlight, so I'm, I'm gonna cheat. Wow, that's incredible. It is awesome. It said hide, and that it was it was stationary. At night. Hide at night, right? Yeah. It was stationary. You've seen that we didn't touch this thing. Saw. So, Saw. Let's see. Well, yeah, we'll find you. Yeah. If we find you, we'll see you, right? Yeah. Did we, you saw me? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> it means when you go to hide, he's really going to be able to find you easily. <laughs> Coming up one at a time because uh, it's a very old staircase, and we just want to make sure we're being safe. It's actually, everything up here is original from the 1800s. Um, you Crazy know, the son is Julius after William never touched anything, he never did any remodeling up here, so uh, everything's pretty much how it was. All the furniture is the same. right now? Do you know that we're here? Can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice? We can hear it. Who's we? That just named a whole bunch of Dude, I heard one. I heard one clear name. It was Mamie. 
Mamie is one of the Phelps. Yeah. That's Julius' wife. Right. That was a guy's name, wasn't it? No, it was a girl, was it? Mamie, Mamie, was that you saying your name? Mamie, are you here? session. With Lynn and Lou. We heard that there's a doctor up here. What was his name again? Dr. Smith. What what's your name? Doctor what? A little girl. Does the doctor have you? Well, I want to say that the box that's right behind us is the abortion tools. I was looking back there, that little box. Is the doctor here with us? We know that this was your favorite piece of equipment that you used to torture people with. And I'm sure the people that you tortured were women that you saw. That's, that's something. What did you use this big box for with the electrodes? Did you shock people? Did girls come to you for help? And you hurt them instead? How, how long have you been here? Yeah, I'm not really sure who's... We're getting a lot. Who's here, yeah. Like the, uh, the doctor, we're getting women, little girls. Yeah. Why don't you bring the box over here and see if that... The what? The box. Bring the box over here. The box. That's the box. I'm assuming that's the box of abortion tools. Oh, it is? Yeah. I'm not touching it. What do I have in my hand? That's abortion tools. That's the, yeah. Yeah. Forceps. Are these your tools, Dr. Smith? Run. Run? Is that a warning? Are you... Eat? Are you trying to warn me because I'm touching your tools? What are you going to do to me if I try to take these home with me? 